Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. First, let me tip my hat to Daryl Hamilton. Right, What happened to him is easily, in my opinion, the worst story in sports this year. I always consider Daryl Hamilton to be a role model, a class guy, a great fielder, um, one of the better fielding outfielders I've seen. He was a father. He had a very young child. Uh, my prayers go out to he and his family. That's a big loss. Let me also back Pete Rose. Right? You know, this is kind of a generational thing. There's some older people, folks older than my old behind, right? There's some older people who seem to feel that gambling and baseball can never mix, right? This is the crowd that doesn't understand Adam Silver, the NBA commissioner, when he says, hey, you know, the NBA is looking to endorse gambling partners, right? Somehow baseball is supposed to be different. I'll concede baseball had the 1919 Black Scox scandal, and that's kind of blinded a lot of people. If Pete Rose can hold a press conference, and can honestly say, I bet on my team. I believed in them that much. I never bet on the team we're playing. Then in my opinion, he belongs in the Hall of Fame. Right? In my opinion, we need to make the distinction between Pete betting on his team and Pete betting on his team to lose. Right? If he never bet on his team to lose, then I don't see what the big deal is. Let me say I do understand the argument that as manager, right? he was a player manager, as manager of the Reds, if he bet on a team on Monday, he might deplete the bullpen. Right? He might keep the starter in, in situations where the starter should come out. He might play good players nursing injuries simply to win that Monday game, and that might cost the team on Tuesday. But understand, a gambler betting on himself, a gambler betting on his team, isn't corrupting the sport like one throwing games. Right? I think this Pete Rose story is silly. I don't think we, the fans, have enough information. Who did Pete bet on? If it's the Cincinnati Reds, put the man in the hall. He's not Shoeless Joe Jackson, right? He's not someone who ever threw games. I'm unaware of any evidence that he ever did anything like that or bet on his team to lose. Now, let's talk about Oscar De La Hoya. <laughs> and people need to understand that Oscar, who now is saying, look, remember that Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight? I might be able to do that. I'm 50 50 now on coming back. I want to fight the best. Golovkin, Mayweather. Let me make a couple of points. First, with regard to Golovkin or Mayweather, Oscar, if you do come back, you need to fight Floyd Mayweather. He's smaller than Golovkin. Right? He's smaller than Golovkin. The public gives him more credit than it gives Golovkin. Right? Mayweather calls himself TBE. The public. Just look at the box office numbers. The public believes he is a multi-generational great. That he, at a minimum, is on the short list of best fighter ever. Right, if you can name a best fighter ever in a sport of competing styles. Right, for what it's worth, I think Ray Leonard beat a guy who would beat Floyd on his best day, and that's Thomas the Hitman Hearns. Right, not saying Hearns was necessarily better than Floyd, I just think the styles don't match up for Floyd. I'm sure you could pick others. Right, I'll agree that the Hawk Aaron Pryor would give Mayweather all he could handle, just like. Emmanuel Augustus gave Mayweather all he could handle by Mayweather's own admission. Right? Volume, running red lights, etc. But let me just say this. Right? 
Oscar, if it goes badly against Golovkin, we know what happens. You get knocked out early. You look terrible. You don't want to be Matthew Macklin getting stopped. You don't want to be Ishida getting stopped. You don't want to be Marco Antonio Rubio getting stopped. You don't want to be Daniel Gill getting stopped. If you come back, you want to make sure you go a few rounds. You don't have that guarantee against Golovkin. Think about what happens when you back up too. Manny Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather. There are moments in that fight where you wondered why Pacquiao didn't just stay in the middle of the ring. Take a step back. Get a breather. Get a break in the action. Right? Watching the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, I didn't get the feeling Floyd was going to run across the ring and come find him. Right? Floyd's comfortable on his back foot. Floyd's comfortable with the lead. Right? If Mayweather is beating you and he's leading in the fight, he might not step on the gas to finish you. Now, you and I know that's not Golovkin's personality. Golovkin's a bit of a Mike Tyson personality, right? If you're in there and it's a little bit hot and you're getting hit with some shots you didn't want to get hit with, and you take a step back against Golovkin, guess what? Golovkin might come find you. Golovkin might literally not only come find you, Golovkin might come finish you. Keep in mind, too, there's a been there, done that type of dynamic of Oscar against Floyd, right? Oscar is the last man. Win a judge's scorecard in a fight against Mayweather. He's fought Mayweather, right? Fight night, he'd know what to expect. He knows how good Mayweather is as a counter. He's seen it, right? He knows the height. He knows the spacing. First fight didn't work out for him, but he knows what to expect. Golovkin, I'm not sure if people really do. You're in the ring, he's a little bit farther away from you than you think. Right? You think you can hit him with the jab, the jab that Oscar hit Floyd with, and that jab's coming up short. You see guys like Martin Murray, who are there trying to land a jab, can't quite do it, then start getting hit with Golovkin's punches. And guys literally look confused, right? Marco Antonio Rubio gets hit on the top of the head, goes down. When he gets up, he, he looks like he's wondering what happened, right? You don't really know what happened with Golovkin. So if I'm Oscar, I would rather fight the smaller man, the guy who's not the finisher, Right? The guy who I'm familiar with because I fought him before. The guy who's going to let me have breathers, you know, let me back away without coming across to KO me. Right? The guy who prefers to be on his back foot rather than the guy who takes guys out on his front foot. Right? If I'm Oscar De La Hoya, I'd have a strong preference for Floyd Mayweather. Mayweather's already said. If Oscar comes back, okay, have him contact me, right? You might not be able to fight Oscar in September, right? Mayweather himself is saying, excuse me, Oscar himself is saying, I want four months, right? Oscar's not going to be ready to fight anybody in September. But understand, Oscar's such a big name in the sport, and this fight would be so interesting. Mayweather cleared over $200 million dollars. For his fight against Manny Pacquiao. I'm telling you that if Mayweather were to say, okay, well, next Cinco de Mayo. Right? Let's do this in Vegas. He's going to have the MGM Grand and half that town ready to put that fight together. You're kidding yourself if you don't think media outlets wouldn't jump at the opportunity to cover that fight. That fight would be huge. Now, all of that said, let me be diplomatic here. That fight would also be a big mistake for Oscar. Huge. He's mentioned Ray Leonard coming back after a, a three-year layoff to beat Marvin Hagler in really one of the sport's finest moments. Right? I can't imagine a worse fighter to fight after a long layoff than Marvin Hagler.
Understand, too, I think history doesn't quite realize how great a fighter Hagler was, right? Hagler hadn't lost for several years. You're talking about a guy who really beats Duran, right? Duran, in some interviews, has called Hagler the best he's ever faced, right? He beats Duran. He beats Thomas Hearns in a classic, right? Back in the 80s, some of the roughest men were at middleweight. Hagler takes out John the Beast Mugabe. I'm telling you, Hagler was a badass of the highest order. Hagler was a guy who wasn't going to give you a breather. He was going to find you. He could fight inside, and he was a chess player. But let me say this. Ray Leonard, when he fights Hagler, is younger. He's younger than Oscar is right now. Oscar's in his 40s. Understand, too, Ray Leonard in the 80s got a detached retina. He didn't fight that often. Right? He did not fight that often. There wasn't as much wear on the tire with him as there is with Oscar De La Hoya. There just wasn't. Let me make another point. Ray Leonard was two-handed with blinding hand speed. Hand speed was one of Ray Leonard's calling cards. Understand the world is different for guys with hand speed. It just is. Right? Guys with hand speed can bluff their way through fights. Right? You don't have to land all the punches you throw if you're a combination puncher, with Ray Leonard was. Blessed with hand speed, you can just throw combinations. Many in the crowd are going to be dazzled. The combinations could bounce off the other guy's shoulder, could bounce off the other guy's guard. Ray Leonard moved his hand so fast, the other guy would have to freeze. That gave Ray Leonard moments in fights. Right? Think Yvonne Calderon. Right? Think Gary Russell today. Right? There are moments in a Gary Russell fight where Gary starts to get off and you realize, man, you know, the other guy's just going to be frozen for a second. Ray Leonard had the hand speed advantage on Marvin Hagler. He knew that going into the fight. We, the fans, knew that. Now, Oscar's one-handed. He's not two-handed. Oscar's left, his lead hand, is actually his dominant hand, right? In other words, when Oscar opens up, it's not the same for an opponent. Some opponents would make the decision to take his off hand, right? I'm telling you, in a recent fight, Deontay Wilder, another one-handed fighter, is able to drop Eric Molina with the left hand. Why? Because Molina's looking at Wilder's right hand like this. He's not even defending the left hand. So when Wilder hits him with the left, Molina goes down. All I'm saying is against Oscar, you'd be fixated on the left hand. You'd just be fixated on it. A lot of guys would then say, okay, you know what? I'll take his right hand. You don't think Janady Golovkin wouldn't be willing to take a right hand as part of an exchange with Oscar if Golovkin thought he could land in that exchange? So Oscar doesn't have the advantages that Ray Leonard had in the late 80s when he fought Marvin Hagler. Also, Ray Leonard had better legs than Oscar. Let's be real, right? Ray Leonard could dance around the ring. Let me say this, too. Ray Leonard had a better relationship. Both Oscar and Ray were huge. But Ray Leonard had a better relationship with the fans than Oscar. It's a different kind of relationship. Right? Ray would let fans in on the fight. Ray would be out there shaking a hand during fights. Ray would come in the ring and try to steer down opponents, but it was really more of a comedy act. You know, we laughed along with Ray. There wasn't the level of seriousness that there was with Oscar De La Hoya. Don't get me wrong. Ray was a serious fighter, very serious. But he would come in with tassels on his shoes. You know the kind of guy. When Ray came in, you knew the afro had to look good. 
right? You understood that. The robe had to look good. I remember I saw Ray enter the ring for a fight wearing a Franklin robe. And I remember a friend who I was talking about the fight with afterwards just kept talking about the guy's Franklin robe, right? Ray was, you know, a showman. Fans understood that. That was a big part of his game. That's never been a big part of Oscar De La Hoya's game. It just hasn't been. Right? So I'll say this. You know, Oscar, in picking the guys he's picking, right? Golovkin, Mayweather, is really putting himself in a bad situation. Right? At an older age than Ray was when he fought Hagler. Now, if we compare apples to apples, if we look at what Ray did as he entered his 40s, right? When he was at the time of his career where Oscar is now, then understand that Ray Leonard wasn't the Ray Leonard who beats Marvelous Marvin Hagler. That Ray Leonard is the Ray Leonard who loses badly to terrible Terry Norris. Who loses badly. I believe he hits the canvas against Hector Macho Camacho. Right? If you're looking at which Ray Leonard in which to compare Oscar De La Hoya, and understand Oscar hasn't fought in several years. Ray Leonard hadn't fought in three. Oscar hasn't fought in longer than that. Maybe the Ray Leonard we should be comparing Oscar to is the Ray Leonard who fought Terry Norris. Terry, by the way, great fighter. Multiple champion. I believe he's a Hall of Famer. He should be if he's not. Right? Let's just say Ray Leonard against terrible Terry Norris. You saw that the reflexes were gone. That was obvious, right? Against Hector Camacho, why did he take that fight? Camacho always had above average hand speed, always, right? My point is Floyd Mayweather today has above average hand speed. Mayweather today has better hand speed in his late 30s than Marvin Hagler had at 32 years old, right? If Oscar fights Floyd Mayweather, how's he going to handle Mayweather's hand speed? Mayweather has maintained the sharpness of his game. Oscar has let his game go. How is Oscar going to come back and deal with Mayweather's hand speed? Let me go one step further. When Ray came back against Hagler, people need to realize that Ray came in at a heavier weight than he normally fought. Right? Ray fights Thomas the Hitman Hearns at welterweight. Right? Ray was moving up to middleweight when he came back. Right? To fight Hagler in his weight class. Now that's a little bit easier to do when you've been out of the ring. Right? Because as we get older, for most of us, I'd say we gain a few pounds, right? If I walk down the street or I go to a gym and you ask me, who are going to be the thinnest people here? I'm going to say, oh, it's going to be the younger people, right? Young people have less body fat than older people. Now, Oscar, who fought Bernard Hopkins for his middleweight title years ago, is talking about coming back after a multi-year layoff at 154 pounds, less than 160. Now, let me state the obvious. Doesn't this sound ridiculous? If you're planning on fighting Golovkin, Golovkin's the belt holder at 160. If you've already fought for the title at 160, if you were to come back, wouldn't you want to fight Golovkin for his title at 160? Please, Oscar, don't tell us that you're planning on fighting Golovkin at 154 for his 160-pound title. Please, don't do that. 
right? And so, aren't you a bit concerned? Aren't you a bit concerned that Oscar would come back and then would want the middleweight champion to drop a weight class to fight him? If you're a boxing purist, aren't you cringing at the thought? Why not come back and say, hey, I'll fight Vladimir Klitschko if he drops down a cruiserweight? Come on, that's ridiculous. Fight the man for his title you've already fought at 160 pounds. In fact, we know that Oscar has had fights where he's weighed more than 160 pounds because Oscar was a weight gainer after weigh-ins. So if Oscar wants to fight at 154, that's another reason why. He should prefer to fight Mayweather, right, who you know, recently gave back the belt at 154, but who's been fighting at 147 and 154, right? Keep in mind, when Mayweather and De La Hoya fought for De La Hoya's title many years ago, that was for De La Hoya's 154-pound title, right? So that should tell you something's wrong here. We know. Just look at how the suits fit De La Hoya. We know he's not in the 150s right now. Yet he's saying, if I come back, I don't want to fight at the weight I'm at today. I want to fight at 154. So the red flags are out here. I don't think it ends well for De La Hoya against either Golovkin or Mayweather. Against Golovkin, he might get the Matthew Macklin treatment. Golovkin up in his face, hitting him with hooks, taking out his body, letting him know, look, you're not in your prime, you're rusty, you're several years past your prime, and I just want you to, to remind you how brutal the sport of boxing can be. Or he's going to fight Mayweather, a smaller man who he might be able to go a few rounds with. Maybe Mayweather sharp shoots him like Mayweather did with Arturo Gatti. That's the kind of fight I would expect the rematch to be, right? Mayweather coming in and sharp shooting him. But at least Gotti lasted a few rounds, right? Gotti wasn't taken out in the first three rounds. At least that kind of fight would give De La Hoya an opportunity to go a few rounds. Either way, I think you could put the letter L on a De La Hoya comeback. I don't think he beats the best. I don't blame him for wanting to fight the best because that's what Hall of Famers do. And that's who De La Hoya is. He was a great fighter in his day. I just believe his day has passed. I view the Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler fight as really one of those anomalies, one of those singular events, right? That you know, don't take place that often. That's an outlier event. That's kind of like Henry Maskey. Look up that name coming back after a multi-year layoff, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, lightning can strike, right? Yeah, crazy things can happen, right? Guys throw perfect games in baseball every few years. Okay, it can happen, but I wouldn't bet on it happening. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. And I can't, I can't emphasize this enough. You've heard me say in videos in the past that Floyd Mayweather's not loved, right? Ray Leonard was loved. You know, think Manny Pacquiao. That's the kind of fan relationship. Oscar De La Hoya was also loved. People forget back then <laughs> the guys booing Oscar, it was kind of weird were guys like Fernando Vargas, I believe, because at weigh-ins, girls would show up and would throw panties at the stage for Oscar De La Hoya. No one was throwing the panties for Fernando Vargas, right? So you had, you had some people saying, hey, Oscar's sellout. But then you had another group that loved him. I could tell you I was in the sports book at the MGM when that Oscar De La Hoya Floyd Mayweather fight let out. And I'm telling you, people came streaming in from the fight and they thought De La Hoya had gotten robbed, right? He wasn't robbed. Floyd clearly wins the fight in my eyes. But just understand the love even that night was for Oscar. 
right? So here, I'm a little bit melancholic because Oscar was a great fighter. The problem, though, is, as you know, you know, boxing's a hard sport for guys to leave, right? You know, you, you see an Ali, and he keeps coming back. Right, Bernard Hopkins told all of us his last fight was going to be against Antonio Tarver. That was years ago. David Hay said, hey, I'm out of the sport at 32. Even today, David Hay is talking about fighting Deontay Wilder. Right, that's the nature of the sport. Right, let's just say I'm a little bit saddened to see a very successful boxing promoter uh, thinking about coming back in the ring against these younger Lions, and he's picking the biggest lions in the room. Anyway, let me hear from you. How do you see it? Is there anybody out there who thinks that De La Hoya would have a chance? Understand the level of theater, and it would be great. De La Hoya has said that if he comes back, he only wants one man as his trainer. Floyd Mayweather Sr. People forget those two guys had quite a run together. What that would mean is that Mayweather Sr. would have to leave his son's corner and travel across the ring. What that would mean is that Roger Mayweather, who was the trainer for many of Floyd's biggest fights, would be back in the corner. You would have a lot of drama, a lot for fans to chew on. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I'll say whoever fights Oscar here, whether it's Triple G or whether it is uh, Floyd, I would expect both men to win that fight by KO. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.